Hey guys, welcome to day 29. It is our last day of code. Congratulations on making it this far and we will finish up today by looking at different programming languages in the world. Java isn't the only one. There's Python, C++, Scheme, Ruby, Swift, and many more. We've only scratched the surface, but what's interesting is that most of these languages are built on the same building blocks. So let's open up a text editor, and I have Sublime, and so I'm just gonna open up Sublime, but you could open up text edit or like whatever you want, something where you can write text in, because we're gonna be writing in a bunch of languages, and so it wouldn't make sense to open up NetBeans, which we've kind of set up just for Java. So what are the main building blocks of most languages? Well, we have variables, and those are like how we deal with the data, how do we store it, like what types of data structures do we have, like how do we deal with like local, global, all of that. Like every programming language has some type of way of dealing with data, and so we'll just call those variables. And then we also have operations, and that's a big building block because this is how we, you know, add, subtract, multiply, all of that. How do we actually change the data and then we have control flow statements and this is like control flow statements and these are like you know your ifs your whiles your do while all of that how do you actually iterate through the stuff you want to go through and so those are control flow and then we also have functions and so functions like we've been dealing in an object oriented programming language but not everyone's like that in the world you know in the programming world and so functions are just like how do I say do this block of code that I might want to do later so how do I save like a group of statements that I want to happen and are there parameters to that like how does that even work so yes I've said that these are the main building blocks but you know what proves that? Well, we are going to code in a bunch of programming languages today. So we've done Java, but what about, you know, Swift, C++, Scheme, Python, Ruby, all of these? Well, we are going to do it right now. And so in Java, when we want to set a variable, we do string s equals hello world, you know, hello world. <laughs> And then we have that semicolon, of course. And so I'm going to put a comment up here that's like Java because we know this is in Java. And there we go. And so we have that. That's how we do it in Java. But what about Python? This is a programming language we have not done before, but I'm gonna show you what a variable is and it's gonna be so similar to Java. You're gonna be like, oh, I can code in Python now. And so what is it? It's S equals hello world. You don't have to put the data type in front. And there's no semicolon. Pretty easy, right? But in Python, indentation of your code matters. And like here, we don't need to have this indented. But you know how in Java, how we kind of did source format to like format all of our code to make it look pretty? But the format didn't necessarily change whether, you know, our code worked or not. Well, in Python, the formatting, the indentation matters. And so that's what kind of replaces the semicolons. And so what about another language? How do we, you know, declare more variables? Well, consider C++. Here, we just do string with a lowercase s and then s because that's the variable name. And then we'll say equal the value of hello world. And then we also need this semicolon. And so again, so similar, like these three lines of code, it's very easy to say, like I'm setting this variable s to the value of hello world. Okay, so now we know to set variables in like three languages. What about operations? Well, in Java, so we'll go a little comment Java. And what do we do in Java? Well, let's say we have an int x. Cool, our variable name is x, it's an int, and we want it to be four plus four. You know, we want x to be eight. How would we do this in another programming language? Consider Scheme or Racket, which is kind of like, you know, Perl or some of the functional languages, which is different than an object-oriented programming language. And you'll see that um, they're different in a second. And so if I wanted to create a variable x with the value of four plus four, I would do define x. And what do I want it to be? four plus four, here we go. There we go, isn't that really weird? Like this is weird. I'm saying define x to be the value of four plus four, where the operator is first in the little, you know, parentheses, and then we have what we want the parameters to be. This is weird. So like I when I call a function, instead of doing like a name or like whatever the object is and then dot and then the function name, I'm saying run this function on x run the addition with the value of four and four as the parameters. This is really weird and very different from Java, but also super important to know, and this is a 
functional programming language versus an object-oriented programming language. And this is also like Lisp a little bit too. And so again, programming language, scheme, bracket, Lisp, yes. And so what else can we do? Well, these are our operations. And so I'm gonna do a little dashes there. And we're just gonna format this a bit. And we'll have variables up here. And then now we'll have our control flow statements. Cool. And we'll do a little extra space there. You know, so it's all good. And so now we're gonna program in more languages. <laughs> so we have, you know, how do we do it in Java? Well, I'm just gonna do kind of a counter, you know, int while, you'll see in a second. So say we want an int counter equals five. And we wanna say like, while the counter is greater than zero, so we're counting down from five, you know, four, three, two, one, zero. And then when it's zero, it'll jump out of the while loop. And so here we would do, maybe we'd print out the counter. So we'll go to system.out.println if this is Java and we'll print out the value of counter. And then once we've printed out the value, we'll decrement the counter and we can just do counter minus minus. This is how we do it in Java. But what about another programming language? And I'm going to scroll this down so it's a little bit more towards the top of our screen. There we go. Um, what about, yeah, what about another programming language? Well, we could do this in Swift, and Swift is used for iOS development. And so if you're interested in making like Mac apps, you know, other types of apps for your iPhone, stuff like that, this is what's used in iOS development. And just for reference, Java is used for Android development. This is just, you know, in case you didn't know. And if you're interested in making like mobile apps, these are two languages to kind of know. And so you can mess around with them, see what they're like, but I'm gonna show you how very similar they actually are. And so say we wanna do um, a counter variable and then a while type of loop that will print out our counter. Well, in Swift, you would do var counter equals five. Very, very similar. Don't need the semicolon, that's cool, okay. And then we'll say while the counter is greater than zero. And because this is Swift, we don't need these parentheses. Those were formed just of habit. And so we'll say while the counter is greater than zero, we still need the curly braces and we'll just print all in the counter. So we don't even need the system dot out. And then we'll just do the counter minus minus, just like Java. And then we do not need these semicolons again due to habit because <laughs> I've been coding in Java for 30 days. Um, and so here we are, very, very similar. Like, look at this. Like we have a line for our, it's like line by line, the same operation kind of, but they're so similar. It's just like syntax you have to learn if you wanna jump into another programming language. Now lastly, functions. And so I'm gonna copy this down a little bit. We'll add some more enters so it's more towards the upper middle of the screen. And so how do we do functions in Java? Well, we just, we do, we do a lot of stuff for Java. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff that we have in our functions if we wanna create one. And so we usually do like a public, a static, we could say you return a string and we could call it say hello, there you go. And in this, we will put a string that is the name, cool. And then we'll do our curly braces and then we'll say like string say equals hello plus the name. So we wanna say hello, Catherine, hello you know, whoever it is, hello Alice, hello Rebecca, whatever it is. And then we wanna actually return whatever we wanna say. Now, what about another programming language? What about Ruby? Ruby is a programming language, and if you've heard of Ruby on Rails, it's kind of like web development, so if you're interested in making stuff for the internet, this is important. You'd also wanna check out, and this is not like Ruby, but like CSS, HTML, you know, JavaScript, all of those in Ruby, you know, all web stuff and you can do other stuff with them too but if you're interested in like web developments this would be what languages to check out next and so what do, how do we do this in ruby well it's a lot less words it's a lot less verbose and so you'll just say def say hello and you'll just put the name in you don't need to put the data type that's cool and then in here we'll just do you know var that's going to be the name of our variable so we'll make it say to make it more parallel to the you know top one and so we'll say and then we'll just do hello and then we'll do the plus name like before no semicolons needed cool and then we'll return this var and then we'll just say end to end the function a little bit different it's also ruby and lua 
are very similar. Lua can be used in like game development. If you're interested in that, I'll put a link down below that goes into a little bit how to make like a ping pong game in Lua. And so that's how you would make a function in Lua. Again, very similar. You're going to have, they're all going to have the same type of properties. Like you're going to say something defines the function. Like you're going to say public stat. There's going to be some kind of format that says, hey, this is a function. You're going to have a name of your function. Like here, our name is say, say hello. You're going to have some kind of parameters, some kind of way to pass input into the function that you want to be able to access. And then you're going to have some kind of body of a function saying like, hey, this is what I want to do. And then you're going to need a way to end the function. And so in Java, it's like open curly bracket, close curly bracket. Here you have the def and then the end. Another building block is classes and structs. And some languages like won't even have this and some will. It just really depends on what you're programming in. But all programming languages have some kind of way to do variables, you know, control flow statements, operations, and functions. And so this is a lot. These are huge building blocks. And I'll kind of zoom out. This could be, yeah, it's a bad idea. So we got these variables, operations, control flow, and functions. So basically now you can code in any language and it only took you 30 days. Cool. So you did it. You did 30 days of code. Congratulations. This is like a huge deal. You are officially a computer scientist. You now have the backbone to do real stuff in CS, whether it's like mobile or web or hardware or whatever. You have the tools to make it happen and to find, you know, what you wanna do, like I said, you can go into web development, you can go into mobile, whatever you wanna do, you now have a good foundation to do that. I will put resources down below to help you out and kind of, you know, branch out into these different things. I will be making more videos, and so if you have any suggestions, put them in the comments below. Doing more hacker rank challenges will also be super helpful if you wanna learn like a new language like Python or C++. If you wanna learn one of these languages and, you know, practice the syntax. Hacker Inc's a great resource for that. As for new videos, I will be doing a Q&A. And so if you have questions about programming or about the series or about anything else, if you go on Twitter and you use the hashtag AskBlondieBytes and ask me a question, that'll be cool. And I will make a video answering your questions. And what's next for this channel? Well, we may do mobile, we may do web development, we may do like theory stuff in the universe, or we may do, you know, stuff for tech technical interviews. And so if you're interested in that, let me know. Let me know what you want to learn. <laughs> As for the winners of the raffle, I said there would be a raffle and there is one. And so these are the winners and you won money. The money is real and yeah. And so I will direct message you on Twitter and you will, you know, get your Amazon gift card and all of that. Thank you to everyone at Hacker Inc. for helping create awesome challenges. We had over 35,000 people sign up for the contest, which is incredible. You guys have been amazing. The contest would not have happened without you guys. The challenges would not have been created or be done or be together in this thing. So thank you very much. Thank you to my brother for letting me borrow your camera, even though you're at school right now and don't know I'm borrowing it. And thank you for watching. And I hope you learned something new throughout the series. Bye-bye.